people's hearts are usually by nature attached to those who possess might, glory, strength, power, wealth, and so on. And this makes them, this attachment makes them submit to the will and the power of those to whom they're attached. And people are usually attached to others for one or two reasons. They either hope to get a benefit from them or fear to be harmed. And this attachment leads the person to live as a humiliated captive. He goes through life stripped from his might and dignity. He loses his rights. He loses his own willpower and he gives up his original identity if he does not go against it. And this is why Islam emphasized that the attachment of the slave's heart should be to Allah Azza wa Jal alone. Because He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the only one who's deserving to direct our servitude to and to be relied upon. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Many texts. He who relies on Allah, who puts his, his trust in Allah, then he is sufficient for him. Likewise in the sunnah, there were many instructions from the Prophet ﷺ to the companions in this regards. One such example is the Narration in reported by Tirmidhi, classified as authentic by Al Albani, and reported narrated by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, who was with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was a young boy, one day, and he told him this magnificent hadith, these precious instructions which scholars throughout time authored books after books in explanation to these few words, yet, yet deep and rich. Amongst the things he told him, and all of which revolved around the same issue, Allah, attachment to Allah, dependence on Allah, reliance on Allah, power of Allah, sovereignty of Allah, might of Allah. Ya ghulam, inni u'allimuka kalimat. Oh young boy, I'm going to teach you a few words. And then he said, amongst the things, wa'lam anna al-ummata law ijtama'at على أن يضروك بشيء لا يضروك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله عليك. And know that if the entire population, all the people, collectively gather, collectively agree to harm you with a thing, a single thing, then they will not be able to accept. With that which Allah had decreed upon you. 
And then he tells him, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ If you ask, ask of Allah. وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ And if you seek assistance, seek it from Allah. However, Allah Azza wa Jal, through His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, taught us that part of the process of attaching the heart to Allah and reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal is to utilize all worldly permissible means. But warned us against attaching the heart to the means as opposed to attaching it to Allah. He made it mandatory upon us to utilize all means that are permissible, but warned us from becoming attached to these means. As a matter of fact, it's a form of shirk to attach your heart to the means and not to Allah Azza wa Jal. Why is that? Because utilizing means Though you know Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed something which you don't know, is ultimate submission to Allah Azza wa Jal. I'll give an example in the Sunnah. The hadith is also reported in the book on At Tirmidhi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, and classified as sound by Al Albani. Amr ibn Umayyah, radiyallahu anhu, said that a man walked into the masjid sallallahu alayhi wasallam and asked the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam the following question he said i have my she camel outside he wanted to understand the concept of reliance on allah azza wa jal and this was an opportunity for the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to legislate to the ummah clarify it to the ummah he said my she camel is outside should I tie it to the pillar or simply rely upon Allah? He said, no, go out and tie it and rely on Allah. So part of relying on Allah is to tie that camel, to utilize that means. But then after that, rely on Allah because whatever Allah wills will happen regardless of what means you utilize. And in order to attach the hearts of the believers to Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal repeatedly mentioned His beautiful and perfect qualities in the Quran. Like might, sovereignty, power, ability, and that his knowledge is encompassing over all things. And that he sees everything. He hears everything. All of these qualities. This one beautiful verse. In Surah Ali Imran. قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءَ وتنزع الملك ممن تشاء وتعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء بيدك الخير إنك على كل شيء قدير Say O oh Muhammad O oh Allah the possessor of sovereignty you grant sovereignty to whomever you will and you remove sovereignty from whomever you will. قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِمَّنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ You honor whom you will. وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ And you humble whomever you will. بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ In your hands. 
is all goodness. إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ You are capable of all things. And then it continues. تُولِجُ اللَّيْلَ فِي النَّهَارِ وَتُولِجُ النَّهَارَ فِي اللَّيْلِ You alternate day into night and night into day. تُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيْتِ وَتُخْرِجُ الْمَيْتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ You bring the life from the dead and the dead from the life. وَتَرْزُقُ مَنْ تَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ And you give provisions without account to whomever you will. You see these qualities? You see how beautiful these qualities, how perfect these qualities and attributes of Allah. We are so lucky that we are slaves of Allah and not slaves of trees and cows and rats and this and that. Moreover, Allah Azza wa Jal told us in the Qur'an in many places how he used his power for the, or against those who claimed power, who claimed strength, who claimed sovereignty. When Ad said, من أشد منا قوة who is greater in strength than us? Allah destroyed them. How? One of his soldiers, the wind. بِرِيحٍ صَرْصَرٍ عَاتِيَةٍ A strong wind destroyed Ad. One of the soldiers of Allah. One. When the people of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam disbelieved and mocked him, Allah drowned the entire earth and rescued Nuh and his followers. When the people of Lut disobeyed and disbelieved, Allah destroyed them. He flipped the earth upside down and then showered them with hard clay stones. Everything is in the hands of Allah. People's destinies, people's lives, life and death is in the hand of Allah. People's provisions. And therefore, it is incumbent upon us believers not to attach our hearts, not to rely, not to put our trust in anyone or anything. Except Allah, the Almighty, the Exalted. Why? Because everything happens with His command. Everything is under His control. Say, Nothing will befall us except that which Allah had decreed. He is our Lord. And upon Allah, Let the believers rely and put their trust in. See, harm and benefit are in the control and the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. قُلْ مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَعْصِمُكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِنْ أَرَادَ بِكُمْ سُوءًا أَوْ أَرَادَ بِكُمْ رَحْمَةً Say, who can preserve you from Allah if He wills harm to you or mercy to you? The problem is, that it is often sought, might that is, 
glory, honor, is often sought by other than Allah Azza wa Jal. You see, an example for that, an example for seeking protection, benefit, or fearing harm from other than Allah Azza wa Jal is something that I'm exposed to all the time by people who have problems with jinn, evil, eye, envy, magic, what have you, right? People have the tendency to believe that these things happen beyond the control of Allah Azza wa Jal. And there's nothing that can protect you from them, even Allah Azza wa Jal. You tell people, adhere to the daily adhkar, the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. Say your supplications, recite Quran, and that will protect you. Allah promised that. Yes, but Shaykh, yes, but what? Who's the one who instructed us to do that in order to get protection and healing from this? It is Allah. Then if we trust Allah, if our hearts are truly attached to Allah, if we depend on Allah, if we rely on Allah, then we believe Allah. We believe that nothing happens beyond His control. regardless of the type of enemy we are facing. Man kana yuridu al-izzata He who wants might and glory falillahi al-izzatu jami'ah Then glory and might are holy belongs to Allah or belong to Allah. So why seek it elsewhere? And why fear the harm of others when Allah is there to protect us? Why hope to benefit or gain from other than Allah? We need to differentiate between two things. Utilizing means and where this heart should be attached. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المجتبى ثم أما بعد Just like might and glory and honor belong to Allah and are granted to us by Allah so is victory See, Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who grants victory. وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Victory is but from Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal is capable of granting it even to those who are weak and outnumbered. وَكَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ قَلِيلَةٍ غَلَبَتْ فِئَةً كَثِيرَةً بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ How often did a small group Defeat a larger group by the will of Allah. In the battle of Badr, the Prophet and the companions were way outnumbered. Three, four multiples. And the odds weren't even. These came to fight and these didn't. But yet, Allah granted absolute victory to the Prophet ﷺ in this battle. See, trust in Allah Azza wa attaching the heart to Allah Azza wa seeking might and glory and uh, victory from Allah is the way of messengers and those who followed them. When Ibrahim والسلام, was being thrown into that huge fire that was set up for him. He said a beautiful statement which Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran. He said, حَسْبِي اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ حَسْبِي Allah. Allah is sufficient for me. وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ 
and he is the best disposal of affairs. Disposer of affairs. He didn't do much. He couldn't do much except attach the heart to Allah. Victory immediately came to him. Support immediately came to him. Qulna, ya narukuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. We said, O oh fire, be coolness and safety upon Ibrahim. And he was rescued, walked out of the fire untouched and unharmed. In the battle of the trench, when the Prophet وسلم, and the companions were facing a vicious enemy who besieged Medina, in addition to the betrayal of the Jews and the hypocrites from inside Medina. Can you imagine the situation? Yet, despite the difficult, terrifying situation they were in, as Allah described it in the Quran, وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرِ Their hearts reached their throats out of fear. They remained firm. They kept their hearts attached to Allah Azza wa Jal. They put their trust in Allah. They relied upon Allah and remained firm. So, nothing harmed them. And they came out of it victorious. الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ Those to whom people, meaning the hypocrites, said, people have gathered, the pagans, a huge army against you, so fear them. فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا And that did nothing but increase them in faith. وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ And they said, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ What was the consequence? What was the result of this attachment to Allah Azza wa Jal? Trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, reliance upon Allah Azza wa Jal. فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلِ Number one, they returned with a grace and bounty from Allah Azza wa Jal. لَمْ يَمْسَسْهُمْ سُوْ No harm touched them. وَاتَّبَعُوا رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ And they followed the pleasure of Allah Azza wa That's the result of attaching your heart to Allah Azza wa Jal, putting your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, on the contrary, what happens when you don't, or when you attach it to other than Allah Azza wa Jal? The Prophet Sallallahu tells us what happens, as reported by a Tirmidhi classified as sound by Al-Albani, narrated by Abdullah al-Juhani, radiyallahu anhu, he said, whoever attaches his heart to something, Allah will forsake him and leave him to that thing. مَنْ تَعَلَّقَ بِشَيْءٍ وُكِلَ إِلَيْهِ So if you attach your heart if you put your trust and reliance in other than Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah will forsake you. And this is utter loss. When Allah forsakes a slave, it is utter loss. Ibn al-Qayyim said, the thing that corrupts the heart and ruins it the most is attaching it to other than Allah Azza wa Jal because the consequence of this is that Allah forsakes the slave. The problem with those who seek might, glory, victory from other than Allah Azza wa Jal is that they're seeking strength from weak. They're seeking benefit from those who don't possess it. They fear harm from those who are weak. And they forget that all of this is possessed by the one and only subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one of the battles in which Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi uh, attended, 
he, rahimahullah, continued to speak to the leader and motivate him and encourage him and remind him with Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he went to the soldiers, reminding them with Allah Azza wa Jal to put their trust in Allah, to attach their hearts to Allah. So when the army of the Tatar came closer and the leader of the Muslim army saw them, he was taken by that. He was scared. And he said something that he should not have said. Which Ibn Taymiyyah corrected, Rahmatullah said. He said, Ya Khalid ibn al Walid. Where is Khalid ibn al Walid? He said, Don't say that. But rather say, Ya Allah. Put your trust in Allah because He alone can get you out of this. And he continued, continued reminding him. Until Allah Azza wa Jal granted them victory against the enemy. We feel defeated. Then let us remember as an ummah. If you feel down and you see that we're defeated. Then remember. إِنْ يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهُ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ If Allah grants you victory, no one can defeat you. If you feel that the plots of the enemies are too much, then remember, Hasbi Allah wa Ni'am al Remember, Hasbi Allah wa Ni'am al If you're faced by smaller enemies like jinn, and I re emphasize on this because it's widespread, by evil eyes, by magic, don't give in. Don't think that they work outside the boundaries of the control of Allah Azza wa Jal. Everything is within the control of Allah. Everything is under the command of Allah. Everything is under the will of Allah. So remember that in order for you to be able to attach your heart to Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us sincere believers in Him who put their trust and reliance upon Him. Allahumma ameen. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اغفر لوالدينا ولمن كان له حق علينا اللهم انصرنا وانصر بنا اللهم لا تخذلنا وانصر علينا